ahead and get started here. We'll open up for questions and begin with uh, Katie Wenji. Katie, go ahead. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. I'm curious what you guys talked about at halftime because when you guys came out, it was a completely different re-energized team, offensively moving with and without the ball and then defensively more aggressive as well. What did you guys talk about at the break? Yeah, it was just a rousing halftime speech, win one for the Gipper, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think our guys understood uh, the way we were playing in the first half wasn't good enough if we were trying to stay here for a longer period of time. Uh, I give our guys a tremendous amount of credit. Our second half defense uh, was as good as I've seen. That fourth quarter defense uh, was tremendous and timely offense. I think we scored 38 fourth quarter points. Uh, we made seven threes that quarter. Nicola started uh, finding his rhythm. The, uh, Jamal found his rhythm. Michael Porter made some big plays for us. Uh, but the, it always starts with our defense. Uh, and obviously in game four, our defense gave us a chance, but the offense did not. Tonight, it was great to see second half. We have the defense that we need, but the offense came up and helped us convert and come back and win this game. So very resilient group. You know, we've been here before. Our guys believe we're tough. Everybody continues to count us out. That's the way we like it. And we live to die another day. All right, next we'll go to Mike Singer. Mike, go ahead. Hey, Michael, Jamal just said on his post-game interview, you guys play your best when your backs are against the wall. This is now the fourth time you have staved off the elimination in this postseason alone. What do you attribute this to? Yeah, I think just being a very tough, resilient group, you know, that, that believes. And we have belief. I know there's not a lot of belief. I heard uh, one of the commentators the other day said seven teams are left in the bubble, or eight teams are left in the bubble, and seven of them have a chance to win a championship. And we were the one he did not think we had a chance to win a championship. But we don't listen to all that. We believe in ourselves. We believe in the process that we've been going through for the last five years to get us here. That is a very good basketball team over there. There's a reason they're the favorite to win it all. But, you know, for us, it's going out there, playing the, our best brand of basketball. I thought Paul Millsap was a huge for us tonight, his physicality. Uh, his assertiveness, his toughness, and I think our guys fed off of that. So uh, it was great for our veteran to step up and play like that. Our two best players made big plays down the stretch, and Michael Porter, as a rookie, hits a huge three and came up with some clutch rebounds as well. Next, we'll go to Malika Andrews, who is there. Malika, go ahead. No worries. <laughs> Runs in the family. I get it. When, when Jamal was talking about being up against a wall, in this case, it's literally, is there anything you think you can do to kind of recreate that so it isn't in a situation where you're down 3-1 and spark that same sort of inspired basketball? Yeah, I don't know how you replicate that unless you're really in it. Now, you can talk about it. You know, you could try to create adversity for your team early in the season. Uh, you know, I'm a big uh, Mike Tomlin fan. He always talks about it. If my team isn't facing enough adversity, he creates it for them. So they get used to handling it. Uh, but there's nothing like being down 3-1. Uh, and, and I think because we've been there before, this is not a foreign feeling for us. This is something that we, we we're comfortable with this feeling. And, you know, I think that was evident in that second half. I thought in the first half we played really hard. We had much more energy, but we just couldn't make a shot, and the defense wasn't where it needed to be. And then much better job in that second half. But... Um, what's your second question? My second question is the other night you said you wanted to have a little bit more defense on the floor down the stretch, and that was maybe a reason you didn't go with MPJ. And right. tonight you did. What do you think he learns in that situation where he grabs a rebound and he almost gets it moved away, where there's 9.7 seconds left? Yeah. So what does he learn from that type of situation? Well, that, that's, to be honest, you know, that's another situation where you can talk about it, but until you're out there, you know, playing those pivotal minutes down the uh, the stretch of a really close game, those minutes are invaluable. You know, that, that only can speed up a young player like Michael's development and progress because now he has the confidence. Hey, I've been in big games. I've closed out big games. I've made big plays for us to win those games. So, um, you know, I, I played Paul the whole third, started him the fourth, was planning on going back to him. But that group was just, they were playing so well on both ends. I didn't want to stop our own break. So I just stayed with that group. Um, but yeah, for, for Michael, it's invaluable. Excuse me, next we'll go to Mark Kisla. Mark, go ahead. Oh, we got a kiss sighting. <laughs> What's up, Coach? Hey, you don't need any more uh, get no respect uh, stuff, but uh, I imagine you were busy. So at halftime, Charles Barkley said that you guys were already packed and you could go to, uh, to uh, Broncos practice tomorrow. <laughs> but I guess you'll go to practice in the bubble. 
And so I answered that. And then afterwards, uh, you've talked since February about this Clippers team and they're so aggressive and they punch you in the mouth and you don't always respond. Uh, Paul Millsap did that for you tonight. Yeah, I, I'll take that, the second one first, because uh, I, I think that was a huge play that nobody will probably talk about. Uh, when you have a seasoned veteran who has had enough and wasn't just going to sit there and take it, and he, he, he stood up. And I thought his response to that situation really helped our team respond to that. You know, it kind of gave us a group toughness. And that, that was a pivotal play, I think, a turning point in the game. So, uh, you know, Paul played really well for us tonight. But that play you're mentioning, kids, I think was really uh, impactful. Uh, as far as Charles Barkley, um, we're, not, we're not going home yet. We ain't gone fishing yet. Uh, we're going to live to play a game number six and, you know, try to stretch the series out and try to win it. Uh, I know everybody's excited about the Lakers playing the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals, but uh, we're hoping to have something to say about that. All right, we have time for one more here, and we will end with Dave McMiniman. Dave, go ahead. Hey, Mike, you referenced uh, Michael Porter Jr.'s play a couple times tonight, but he hadn't made a field goal when he takes that shot with – a minute 11 to go in a two-point game. What does that say about his confidence in himself and the confidence you have him in him as a team to have him out there on the court in that situation? Yeah, what you love about Michael is that it's, you know, whether it's this youthful inexperience or uh, not really understanding the magnitude of the situation, but he has supreme confidence. Uh, the guy is a tireless worker. He is a gym rat. And for every shot he makes in a game, he's had thousands upon thousands of reps in a practice gym. Um, so what it says is that he has confidence in himself. We have confidence in him. And to your point, maybe the ball didn't find him. He didn't make many shots before that. But every time that kid shoots the ball, I think it's going in. He has a picture perfect, picture perfect shot, a smooth release. And that three that he hit was huge, but I also thought the defense, the rebounding, and just think about this, for a rookie playing in his first playoff experience, the growth that he's shown on the defensive end of the floor from early in the Utah series to now in game five against the Clippers. He still has lots of room for improvement on that end, but he is committed, he is bought in, and he understands the importance of playing both ends. So uh, I give Michael a ton of respect. All right, coach, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.